It said that Imam Abu Hanifa, the man, a man came to him and he said, Imam, I've, I've, I've buried some of my wealth and I forgot where I buried it. And so Imam Abu Hanifa, he said to him, you know, this isn't really a fiqh question, but perhaps just go and pray to Raqqa's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua that you're able to find it. That's what I can tell you to do. So the man, Allahu Akbar, enters into his salah, shalayim surat al-fatiha, all of a sudden he remembers where he buried the money. He got so excited, he didn't even finish the salah, he walked off. He came to Imam Abu Hanifa and he said to him later, he said, Jazakallah khair, it worked perfectly. I was in the salah and all of a sudden I remembered where it was. Imam Abu Hanifa said to him, I did not think that shaitan would allow you to pray two rak'ahs uninterrupted. He would remind you. And this is something that we've all experienced. Shaitan does that because the Prophet ﷺ was asked, he said that it is a theft. That distraction in the prayer is a theft that shaitan steals from your prayer. And so the first thing, is that you make a truce with time. When shaitan comes to you and says, you don't have time, you gotta get back to this book report, you need to get back to this essay, you need to get back to this exam, studying for this exam, you need to beat traffic, you need to leave work, it's gonna be rush hour, all of this type of stuff, that you tell yourself, Allah is the controller of time. Don't tell me, shaitan, that I don't have time when Allah is the controller of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who puts barakah in my time. And so if I've only got an hour to study, let me not rob from Salat al-Dhuhr for that hour because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make the next 50 minutes of my studying more beneficial than the last three hours. So number one is a truce with time. Number two is seek stillness in every station. There's a famous hadith, the hadith of the man who prayed badly. This man, he prays a salah. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the salah, he comes and he gives salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, well, you go back and pray because you didn't pray. So now the man knows he's being watched by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then he goes and he prays again. And then he goes and he gives salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says back to him, go back and pray because you didn't pray. A third time he goes and he prays. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, go back and pray because you didn't pray. The man says, oh messenger of Allah, I don't know any prayer other than this. This is the only way I know how to pray. And so then the Prophet ﷺ then told him a number of things. He says, and then bow until you are tranquil in your bowing. And then stand until, hatta tastawi qa'ima, until you are completely erect when you're standing. And then go into sujood, hatta tatma'inna sajida. And then you, you are tranquil in your sujood, in your prostration. Some people, when they go into ruku', there's no moment of time where they're actually still. They're bouncing. And so you have to make sure that in every station of the prayer, you simply slow it down. That when you go into ruku', you stop for a moment. When you get up from bowing, that you stop for a moment. That when you go into sujood, that you're still for a moment. Let every joint completely rest. When you say Allahu Akbar, pay attention to what you're saying. You are saying Allah is greater. And now, as soon as you say that, get ready. Shaitan is going to start hitting you with everything he's got, including the kitchen sink. So, what then? I'm entering into a battle now. As soon as you enter into the salah, I'm now in a battle with shaitan. And so there are so many things throughout the prayer where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for you to protect yourself from shaitan or to fight back against shaitan. And we'll talk about a few of them inshallah ta'ala if we have time. But the first thing that I want you to know is that there are so many adhkar that you make entering into the prayer. It's called dua al-istiftah. The dua of entering into the prayer. But I want to just look at one of them, and it is a beautiful one. I can't tell you how many times I've met Muslims who are ashamed to pray because of what they know of their own sins. And so it is so beautiful and perfect and appropriate that one of the du'as we are taught to make when you enter into the salah is Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bain khatayai kama ba'adta bayn al mashriq wal Oh Allah, distance me from my sins like I've, you've distanced between the East and the West. And wash me of my sins like a white garment is washed of filth. And cleanse me of my sins like with water and ice and hail.